All right, so here we have a uh, factoring situation where we're likely going to be employing multiple techniques to arrive at a final factored form. So remember, when you go through something like this, uh, you're not done with your factorization until all the factors that you've generated by all your techniques aren't themselves factorable by any of those same techniques anymore. So when you look at this particular situation, uh, I guess first, as in any general factoring setup, you want to look to see if there's a greatest common factor you can pull out of, of all these individual pieces simultaneously. And, and in this case, there is one. Certainly, you've got a leading negative here. So since you've got a leading negative, you can pull that out as common and then pull out anything else that you can, the, the biggest possible things you can commonly pull out of all the uh, little monomials that you see throughout here. So scanning through this, there don't seem to be any uh, common factors to the uh, coefficients 24, 16, 40, 3, 2, and 5. So there's nothing you can get out in regards to that, but there is at least one common factor of x everywhere. So you can pull out that x. So minus x is the greatest common factor you can pull out of this. This will just switch all the signs from the original uh, polynomial and reduce all the original powers of x by 1. So you end up with here a 24 uh, x to the fifth uh, plus a 16 x to the fourth uh, minus a 40 x to the third uh, then minus a 3 x squared plus or minus a 2x and then plus a 5. So one stage of the factoring is complete now. You've taken out the GCF. Uh, the question now becomes are you done? Well you're not necessarily done because now you've got this polynomial piece left over here and check to see if any of the techniques that you have could potentially be applied to this. And in fact, there is a technique that you could potentially apply here because this polynomial has an even number of terms greater than or equal to four. In fact, it has six. So you might try a factorization by grouping here. So try grouping the first half of the terms versus the second half and see if you can perform now little greatest common factorizations on each of those two little groups to see if you can get a, a further result to break down here. So the minus x you pulled out in the beginning, that's done. Uh, it's a monomial. You're never going to be able to do anything else to break that down any further. It's just going to carry through all your subsequent stages. Uh, when you look at now the potential for a grouping here, when you look at the first little group, 24, 16, and minus 40 do have a, a factor in common. Uh, in fact, the thing you can pull out is 8, and then all of the terms in the first little group have at least an x cubed in them. So you can start out the grouping factorization there by taking out a 3x cubed, and what's left then when you factor that out is a 3x squared uh, plus a 2x and minus a 5. So then you look at the second little group here, and you'll have a successful grouping if there's something you can pull out of the second little group so that this same leftover trinomial of 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 appears. And in fact, you can do that here because you can take out the leading negative from this little group. That switches all the signs when you factor it out, and you're left with exactly 3x squared plus 2x and minus 5. So this is then a successful grouping, you've got exactly the same leftover trinomial factor here and here, so you can factor it out as common now. So to complete the grouping, here's the minus x that you pulled out from the beginning. Now the 3x squared uh, plus 2x minus 5 comes out as common from the two big groups in this per set of parentheses now, and then that leaves behind 8x cubed from the first term there, and minus 1 from the second. So there, there's the stage where the grouping is completed. So again, the question arises, are you done? Well, uh, probably not, because you've got a trinomial here that didn't come out of a summer difference of cubes factorization, so it's potentially factorable. And you've got a, a binomial here that actually fits the difference of cubes setup. The thing being perfectly cubed to get 8x cubed is 2x. The thing perfectly cubed to get 1 is 1. So there is more work to be done on both of these. So uh, if we start out maybe with the the trinomial here, here you've got a minus x leading things off. You've got a leading 3 in this trinomial and a constant minus 5. So 3 times minus 5 gives you minus 15, and the factors of minus 15 that combine to this plus 2 in the middle are exactly plus 5 and minus 3. So you can rewrite that 2x in the middle as plus a 5x 
and minus a 3x, and then do another little grouping factorization on that particular piece. Uh, in fact, why don't we just finish that off? We'll carry the 8x cubed minus 1 for the moment down through our, our process here. So when I do my little grouping setup on the trinomial now, uh, there's the minus x that we pulled out in the beginning. Uh, you can get an x out of the first little group there. That leaves behind 3x plus 5. There's a negative 1 now you can take out of the second little group, and there's the sign of the successful grouping there because it leaves behind that same 3x plus 5. And then there's the 8x cubed plus 1, that, or minus 1 that we'll handle uh, in, in a minute here. So here's the minus x we pulled out in the beginning. We'll finish off the grouping to get the trinomial completely factored, so 3x plus 5 comes out. And the leftovers then are x minus 1. x left behind from this first little group, the minus 1 left behind from the second little one, and then there's that 8x cubed minus 1 that's been carrying throughout. Now, when we look things over here, every time you successfully complete a stage in your factorization, and at this point we've successfully factored the trinomial, look over all your factors and see if there's anything else that can be done. So the minus x, monomial, it's been done for a while. 3x plus 5 is a linear factor, nothing else to do with that. x minus 1 is a linear factor, nothing else you can do there. So again, it looks like the only thing that's left is this difference of cubes factorization that we noted earlier. So we'll have a final stage here. So there's the minus x that's been finished for a while. Here's the 3x plus 5 that we just wrapped up. The x minus 1. And now this difference of cubes is going to factor as a binomial times a trinomial where the binomial is built up based off of what things are being perfectly cubed to get you 8x cubed and 1. So first off it's a difference of cubes, so remember the sign in the original summer difference of cubes carries through as the sign between the two terms and the binomial, so there's that minus. And then that, that sign is bookended by the two things that are being perfectly cubed to get you your terms here and here. So the thing you perfectly cubed to get 8x cubed is 2x. The thing you perfectly cubed to get 1 is 1, so your binomial factor is 2x minus 1, and then kick in the pattern that generates the trinomial factor. So that pattern is square the first thing in the binomial, so the first thing in the binomial is 2x, so squaring it gets you 4x squared. Then opposite sign from the binomial, so a plus in this case, so we had a minus here, we turn plus. The product of the two things in the binomial, so the two things in the binomial are 2x and 1, so that gets you 2x. And then finally you add on the square of the last thing in the binomial. Uh, square, last thing in the binomial is 1, so its square is just 1. So there's the trinomial factor following that pattern. It's square the first thing from the binomial, opposite sign, product of the two things in the binomial, plus the square of the second thing in the binomial. And then that completes the difference of cubes factorization. When you look over what you've done now to get this uh, this stage here, well, the 2x minus 1, much like the x minus 1 and the 3x plus 5 is a linear factor, so that's done. And now this trinomial is a trinomial that's come out of a summer difference of cubes factorization. And any trinomial that comes out of a summer difference of cubes factorization is never itself factorable over the real numbers, so there it is you've got your entire problem now boiled down to a fully factored form, none of the factors being any further factorable themselves, so there's your fully factored final result.